Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. At the World Innovation Summit for Education in Doha, two topics that regularly top the agenda are STEM subjects and education for people with disabilities. And this year is no exception. Let's meet the last two Wiser Worlds winners that have been selected for their impressive work in these areas. Some studies show that Qatari students lose interest in maths and science at high school, leading to low academic achievement. But the students in this lab are being encouraged to consider STEM careers that science, technology, engineering and maths. What's changed? I'm going to find out by giving it a go myself. These researchers from the Al Bayrak project are preparing to deliver hands-on science lessons at state-run secondary schools in Qatar. We're finding out what's different about their approach. At this school for boys, Fatima, who's an engineer, is trying to break traditional teaching methods. The aim is to help students improve their performance in STEM subjects. Here in Qatar, because it's a rich country, the students are clearly living in luxury. We want them to understand that it's very important to pursue a scientific degree. Instead of getting people with expertise from abroad, we want local expertise that can start in secondary education. One part of the project is called I Am Discovering Materials. Through the activity, students investigate key features of materials and design their own products. From this experiment, I've learned that we can make soluble materials, which can replace insoluble ones we use at home. This can solve many problems. Al Bayrak was launched in 2007 to support Qatar's national development strategy, which aims to promote innovation and help build a knowledge based economy. The project was created by a team from Qatar University and boasts different elements to try and engage students in STEM subjects. Al Bayrak is a comprehensive program. The student takes part in several activities, including practical workshops and practical experiments. And then there are competitions to encourage and motivate students. They do presentations for their projects and products. They use social media as well to spread the word about sciences. Using Qatar University's facilities and with the help of its professors, there are lots of opportunities for hands-on research. In this lab, students are investigating new topics, ones they wouldn't normally have in state curriculum. To attract the students, we are trying to find easy way to teach them what is going on here, what we are doing, what is research. For environmental engineering, we, I decided to use waste materials in their concrete design. And for civil engineering, I uh, informed them to create a concrete blocks. So they will use three construction applications and three waste materials. When they are learning, they are having fun. Students also have the opportunity to learn about sports science as part of Al Bayrak. The project is run throughout a whole school year and culminates in different competitions, which are judged by a jury of experts. And those taking part appear to be gaining a lot from it. For some, it started to influence their future aspirations. I learned from the I am a researcher workshop how university life would be and how scientific research could be with university doctors and professors. I've discovered new sciences and degrees at university which have made me change my mind about my future. More than 3,000 students, boys and girls, have already got involved so far, and the project aims to reach many more in the future. For many deaf children, developing language can be a struggle. If parents and teachers can't use sign language or lack access to suitable equipment, it can lead to literacy or social exclusion. One project in Argentina may have found the solution in an innovative book. 
Melanie was born deaf in a hearing family. Since she was little, she was curious about books, but she wasn't able to read them. When I was a little girl, I really liked to look at them and to try to learn through the pictures. More than 90% of deaf children have hearing parents and teachers who don't communicate with them effectively, causing cognitive and language difficulties. This can lead to learning barriers and school dropout. Luckily, this was not the case for Melanie. She went to one of the few schools in Argentina which adopts a bilingual model. Argentina Sign Language comes first, then Spanish second. It was there she first discovered video books and became the first child to appear in them. When I was chosen to star in the video books of Canales, I didn't know what a video book was. I thought it was silly, but at the time it was very important to expand it out to all of the children. I felt it was too much for me. I was scared, embarrassed. The Canales Civil Association is behind the Video Books Project, which encourages sign language through reading, not narration. It also connects deaf children with deaf adults and gives teachers a powerful educational tool to promote learning using common references. It's a way of teaching children. They may be learning the Argentina Sign Language as they grow up, so they can develop a better language. Having voiceover means the video books can be shared between deaf children and hearing families, helping to break down communication and emotional barriers. At home, sometimes I communicate with my parents through sign language or by reading their lips. I try to teach them sign language, but it's very difficult for them. Sometimes during meetings, they start to talk, but I can't follow what they say. And then I suffer because I feel isolated. Video books are created by a deaf and hearing specialist and it's recognized there's still work to do. We realized that it was not only a need of children, but also of young people who hadn't passed through reading experiences as a child. Then we searched for age-appropriate stories and interests of young people, as we couldn't offer them stories like Little Red Riding Hood. Just like Melanie, video books has also grown. This year, 11 short stories were launched for teenagers on top of the collections for children, and further expansion is also planned. Video books were like a bridge to read more. I began to relate one thing to another, and now I read more. Melanie is now 17 and goes to an integrated school for deaf and hearing people. Through video books, she's become a linguistic model for children, and together they're helping society become more inclusive. That was the last edition on this year's Wiser Words. Hope you enjoyed hearing about the winning projects. Let us know your thoughts on our social media pages. We will be back soon. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.